Hello everyone, I'm Hiroshi Takahashi from Sofia University in Tokyo. Today I'd like to talk about the introduction to optical circuits. This is a tutorial talk of the IEICE webinar series. So let's get started. This slide shows the example of optical circuit devices. For example, AWG wavelength filters, max and interferometer based optical switch, an optical hybrid for coherent detection, and IQ moderators. These optical circuits are composed of optical waveguide, like this one, and this one, and this and this. So this talk provides fundamentals on optical waveguide and some circuits. This is a, an outline of my talk. First, I'd like to start with the plane wave and Maxwell's equations. As you know, Maxwell's equations are composed of four equations, Faraday's law of induction, Ampere's law, and Gauss's law, and Gauss's law for magnetism. In space where light can travel, there is no electric current, no electric charge, and d equal epsilon e, b equal mu h. So four equations becomes this and this and this equals zero and this is equal zero. Take the rotation of the first equation, this, and this means applying in the Laplacian here and here. And by using the following mathematic rules, this one, double rotation E equal this minus a Laplacian. And this part is zero. So the left side becomes this and the right side here rotation of H equals to the this. So this part will be this. Finally, we obtain the wave equation like this. Wave equation can be written with three scalars as follows. And let's think horizontally polarized plane wave traveling to z direction. So in this case, vector e is 0, e, 0. So this part can be omit, this one, and like this. And this is an plane wave, so there's no change in E along X and Y axis. So the derivative with respect to X is zero and also with Y equals zero. So we can omit this part and this part. So finally, wave equation becomes simple as follows like this, and this is a scalar equation, not a vector, very simple form. As an answer of the wave equations, we can define alternating, alternating electric field of light as E T Z equal A zero exponential to the j omega t minus beta z. Here j is the imaginary units and omega uh, is the <coughs> phase uh, angular frequency 
that that is the phase rotation per unit time and beta is the propagation constant or wave number uh, that is the phase rotation per unit length and a0 is the amplitude of the electric field please note that the actual electric field is a, a real part of the above equation this is this mean that the the electric field is a0 cosine omega t minus beta z if we put e t z into this equation wave equation we will obtain like this and like this so beta equals to plus minus square root of epsilon mu times omega let's think the peak point of the wave peak point is the highest amplitude one so exponential j omega t minus beta z equal one so and from this equation we can get this relation between the omega and beta and the from this equation position z it becomes this one the velocity of the peak point movement that is light speed is given by dz over dt and if we calculate this one like this and this and this finally we obtained c over n c is the light speed in vacuum and n is the refractive index of the media let's move on to the next topic structure and transfer function of optical circuit this slide shows optical waveguide basic structure waveguide core here is surrounded by the cladding layers and refractive index of core is higher than cladding light is confined by total reflection at core cladding boundary and propagates inside the core like this animations this table summarizes the optical waveguide materials one is silica and lithium nibet and silicon and indium phosphide for silica case core size is five times five microns and the feature is the low propagation loss and high precision in optical properties and application is optical switch and the filters in case of the lithium niobet core size is five three times five microns and the feature is the high speed electro optic effect so we can make the high speed modulators in silicon case, the core is silicon and cladding is silica. So the refractive index difference between the core and the cladding is very high. So the waveguide can be bent with a very small radius. So the feature of this waveguide is that the we can make the very compact optical circuit with a small radius and the other feature is the integration with the cmos electron devices so the application is the integrated moderator and the integrated receivers in indium phosphide case the core size is 0 0.3 
times 2 micron, and the feature is the integration with the laser and the photodiode. And this is because that the laser and the photodiode is made of the same materials of the uh, waveguide. So the application is integrated to transmitters and the integrated to detectors. Let's go back to the waveguide structure and discuss electric field of guided light. The electric field is presented by E of x, y, z, t, and this is equal to A of x, y times exponential j omega t minus beta z. This part, A of x, y, presents the electrical field distribution pattern, which is independent of t and z. And A has this kind of the distribution. In many cases, it's a circular. And the optical power is confined inside the core, like these figures. And the second time, exponential j omega t minus beta z, and this uh, presents the uh, propagation along z di direction, which is the same as the plane wave case. The speed of light in the waveguide is C prime equals to the omega over beta, and which is the C over N E. The refractive index is N E. N E is the effective refractive index of the guided light, and N E is between the N1 and N0. And the N0 is the refractive index of the cladding, and N1 is the refractive index of the core. So this is because that light speed is affected by not only core, but also cladding. With this slide, I'd like to I'd like to introduce transfer function of the waveguide. Let's think that the laser light is launched here and the light propagates along this direction and reach the out exit of the waveguide here. And the position is G1 at the entrance and G2 is the exit. The electrical field is at the entrance is A of x, y times exponential j omega t minus beta z1. And at the exit, E equals g times A of x, y times exponential j omega t minus beta z2. And here we define the length of the, uh, length of the waveguide L which is z2 minus z1, and g is the amplitude change parameters. If the g is less than 1, the waveguide is lossy, and if the g is larger than 1, the waveguide is gainable. So the next, I'd like to define the transfer function h of omega as E out over E in. This means that the transfer function is the ratio of the E out and E in. If we calculate this one, and we will finally get the answer as G times exponential minus J beta L. So, the transfer function presents the electric field change by the propagation media, in this case, waveguide, and which is independent of time and absolute positions. I said transfer function is a fun and function 
which is respect to the omega. But in this here, we don't see omega. But beta is Ne times 2 pi over lambda or Ne times omega over C. So the beta is a function of omega. So the transfer function H is a function of omega. This slide shows the transfer functions of simple waveguide structures. The simplest one is this one, which is the ideal lossless waveguide. The transfer function is exponential minus j beta L. In the wide branch case, optical power launched here is divided into two output here and here, so the optical power is the half of the input. So the electric field is the square root of the optical power. So the transfer function is 1 over square root of 2. In the Y merging case, the light here is launched here and propagate here and the reach here. But in this case, the optical power is also 1 over 2 as well as the branching. So please note that the transfer function of the Y merging is 1 over square root of 2. This is the 50% optical couplers. There is a two waveguide, one is this one and one is this one. The two waveguide cross together like this, and optical power launched here is propagated and divided into two ways, here and here. So the amplitude of the transfer function is one over root square root of two, and this is also the same here. But there is some difference. In this case, there is a minus j. And the, so, so if we input the light here and the, the light output here, and this light, uh, I say cross output light, and this light has a 90 degree phase shift. And the next one is the optical phase shifted. This is the waveguide, and here is the, this is the uh, phase shifter. And if the shifter is on, the transfer function is exponential minus j phi. Phi is the phase shift variance. And if the shifter is off, the transfer function is 1. The phase shifter increase or decrease the refractive index of the waveguide so that the beta changes, which results in the including and uh, inducing phase shift phi. With this slide, I'd like to show how to use trans transfer functions. If we input the laser light here, E in, and the after passing through the optical element number one, the electric field is E1. Here, E1 is H1 times E in, and next, the E1 is launched into the element number two, and after the element number two, the electric field is E2. And E2 is the H2 times E1, and E1 is the H1 times E in. So the 
E2 is H2 times H1 times En. And after the repeating this procedure, E out, the final optical output is E out equal Hn times H3 times H2 times H1 times En. So the transfer function of the whole optical circuit is given by the multiplying the, those of the cascaded optical elements. This slide shows the transfer function calculation example. In this case, I show the Y branch type max and the intensity modulators. This is the input port and this is the output port. The laser light launched here and the light is divided into two paths, this one and this one. The one path has the phase shifter here, and the two lights are merged at the Y branch here. The transfer function of this circuit is expressed by these equations, and the first part here is for the upper waveguide. In the upper waveguide, there's the, sorry, and the light in the upper waveguide here it's expressed by the one over square root two, and square root two means the here, this Y branching. And the <clears throat> from here to here, the length is L, so that uh, transfer function of the propagation is exponential minus J beta the L times Here's the phase shifter. So we, we must add this part. And the last one is the one over square root of two here. This is the, this transfer functions. For the lower path here, the light is e expressed by the one over square root of two here and the propagation a transfer function for this for this propagation is exponential minus j beta l and the, we have also the one over square root of two here for margin here so after calculation of this part we we have the transfer function exponential minus j beta l times one over two times exponential j minus j5 plus one. The relative output power equals to the transfer function squared equals to this. And if we calculate this, and finally we, we get the one over two parentheses of the one plus cosine phi. For the phase shifter, it, the phase of the phase shifter, zero, the transfer function, uh, sorry, relative, relative optical output power is, is one. So the output is 100% input. So this is a constructive in interference between two lights here and here. If we set the phase shifter, this one, pi. So in this case, here's the pi. So the cosine, cosine pi is minus one. So the relative optical power is zero. So there's no output. Uh, this is the uh, destructive interference between two waveguides. I'd like to move on to the third topic, Max and the interferometer based optical switch. This slide shows the basic structure of the Max and the interferometer optical switch. The waveguide here, and there is the 50% coupler here. And also we have the 50% coupler here. 
And between two couplers, we have two waveguides. One is this one, and one is this one. So the input light go to the couplers, and the light is divided into two paths, and the two lights are merged here 50, at the 50% coupler, and there is some interference between two lights. And there is opti two optical output here and here. The cross section A to B is shown here. And this is a substrate. And here is the two optical waveguide core, this one and this one. There is a thin film heater on one waveguide here, like this. And if we applied electric power to the, this heater, this and uh, the waveguide is heated. This the yellow area is the heated area. So the principle of the optical waveguide switch operation first, we applied electric power to the heater, and then one of two core is heated and the temperature rises there. Third, refractive index increases and light phase is shifted by 180 degrees. This is because the thermal optic effect. So the, the Thanks to the 180 degree phase shift, output port is switched. Let's think the transfer function and understand the operation principle of the optical switch. Remember, transfer function of the 50% coupler here. Through pass from here to here, the function is 1 over square root 2, and the cross path from here to here. The function is minus j over square root 2. The transfer function between input 1 and output 1 is a sum of the two paths. One is the this path, and the other is this path. I call this pass is upper pass and this pass is lower pass. For the upper pass, the transfer function is here, root 2, phi, and root 2. And the, for the lower pass, this one, j root 2, 0 phi, and the j root 2. So finally, the, this transfer function uh, becomes this values. The output power is uh, for the output one is the H11 squared and the, if we calculate this one and we obtain the uh, output one like this, one minus cosine phi over two. With the same way we can calculate the transfer function for the pass one between two. And the result will be this. So <clears throat> this graph shows the calculated optical power, and the blue one shows the output power for the output number two. And red curve shows the out, output of the output number one. So when the phase shifter off, off means the phi equals zero. In this case, output power two is one, and output number one is zero. So this means that optical light from the input comes out number two. And if we turn on the 
heater and uh, apply the phase shift to pi, like this here. So in this case, the output power one is one. So this means that the light from here comes out at this port. So it is concluded that we can switch, select the way of light. Features of the Mach Zender Interferometer Optical Switch has seven features. First, it is easy to control. Just apply electric power to the heater, enough for the 180 phase shift. And second, high durability. There's no mechanical and moving parts used. Never be broken. And third, low cost mass production using photolithography. And fourth, quick response. If we apply the electricity to the heater, the switch motion will be finished in a few milliseconds. Five, low electric power consumption. The low power consumption for the phase shift of pi is the, is the 0.1 to 0.2 watts. Number six, compact. The unit size is 0.3 millimeter width times three millimeter long, and which is capable of integrate, integrating 100 max and interferometer switches in one substrate. An application is the is that the is the light routing in commercial optical communication system. In the next topic, I'd like to introduce you another marked and interferometer based devices, asymmetric MZI. In this device, two waveguides between the couplers have different lengths. Transfer function of this device is similar to the optical switch. The changes are there's no phase shifter and transfer function for the two waveguides, exponential minus j beta L2 and exponential minus j beta L1 is RR added. With some calculation, we can obtain the transfer function for the pass from input number one to output number two. And the results are shown here, like this, where the delta L is the length difference between the longer and shorter waveguides. That means that L1 equals to, minus, equals to L2 minus L1. The output power at port number two is and uh, H21 squared, and the final answer is like this. So important point is that the, this is the cosine function of omega, and omega is the frequency of light. And we can also obtain the output number one for this for this. And this graph shows the optical power change for output number one, red, and output number two, blue, as a function of the frequency of light. As you see, we can obtain omega one, three, five at output number one here, here, and here and frequency number, omega number two, four, and six at output port here, number output port two here, and here, and here, and periodically. So this device works as a, as a separator or a filter for two, free, two groups of frequencies. Features of Asymmetric Max and Interferometers. One, 
Um, it's a periodically frequency field. A transmission peaks are equally spaced in frequency domain. Please note that it is not equally spaced in the wavelength domain. Second, it has low propagation loss. The loss is 0 to 0.0 dB because, because it is composed of only two waveguides and 50% couplers. The application is a um, frequency to amplitude converter. It is also, uh, that's uh, also called frequency discriminator. And one bit delay interferometer for differential phase shift keying signal detection. I'd like to move on to the next topic, AWG wavelength filter. This slide showed the optical circuit configuration of arrayed waveguide grading wavelength filter for WDM optical communication. WDM stands for Wavelength Division Multiplexing. In this system, for example, 100 laser lights are mixed and transmitted in a single optical fiber. Each light has each information respectively. So, a hundred times larger information can be transmitted compared to the ordinary communication system using one laser. Key device for WDM system is a wavelength filter, also called uh, demultiplexer in the receivers. The demultiplexer separates mixed light and output to respective output port according to wavelengths as shown in this figure. Optical circuit is composed of the inputs, input waveguide here and input slab waveguide here and array waveguide grading and output waveguides on the substrate. Multiplex light from the laser Sorry, a multiplex light from the transmitter propagates in the in input waveguide and diffracts in the slab waveguide as shown in the slide because the slab waveguide wave has the 1000 times wider than the input waveguide, which has with of which a uh, width is only five microns. In the center of the device, there are about 300 waveguide arrayed regularly like this. This part is called arrayed waveguide grading, AWG, because it works as well as the as a conventional diffraction grading. After propagating the AWG, hundreds of light from the waveguide interfere each other in the output, uh, in the output slab waveguide, like this, and focuses the entrance, focuses at the entrance of the output waveguide. The point is that the focusing point depends on the uh, its wavelengths, like this. I'd like to explain the principle of the demultiplexing by AWG. This drawing showed three waveguides in the AWG. Input light from left lower slab waveguide region go into through waveguide, three waveguides. Red short line here denotes wavefront of the guided light. The wavefront at the exit of the three waveguides here are in unison so that the light from the AWG propagates in the output slab waveguide perpendicular 
in this direction, perpendicular to the uh, AWG edge. In this case, wavelengths of light satisfies this equation. Delta L is the length difference between adjacent waveguides. M is an integer number. So this equation means waveguide length difference equals to integer number times wavelengths. This is the reason why the wavefronts are in unison at the exits of light or exits of AWG. In this slide, let's think that light which wavelength is a little longer than the wavelengths in the previous slide. Here, wavelengths is lambda zero plus delta lambda. Since the wavelengths that is spacing between wavefronts are a little longer, wavefront run off the exit of AWG. The run off length is shortest for the inner waveguide among three waveguides in this case. And the, the run of length is longer than the outer waveguide because the outer waveguide is longer and includes more wavefronts, as shown in this figure. As a result, connected three wavefronts at the edge of the AWG here are tilted, as shown in the figure and the light from AWG propagates to the direction of theta. With this and the next slides, I'll talk about AWG principle quantitatively. Right lower figure shows the waveguide exit of AWG and outputs the waveguide. D here is a spacing between waveguides in AWG, and D is called grating pitch. According to the E-phase condition, that is, wavefronts are in unison, runoff lengths here must be integer number times wavelengths, and runoff lengths is D times sine theta. So, the diffraction angle theta must be sat satisfy this equation and this equation called grading equations. Differentiating the grading equation, we obtain relation between theta and lambda. And the relation is expressed by these equations. By using the x equal f slab times theta here, f slab is the focal length in output slab, length from here to here. The focal point movement delta x power wavelengths change delta lambda is obtained as this equation. The important point is that if we have a big value of delta L here, small de delta lambda, this one, is allowed. This means that the waveguide layout design with large delta L can realize small wavelength spacing. For example, let's think the case that the wavelength spacing in WDM communication is one nanometer. For example, wavelengths are 1550 nanometer, 1551 nanometer, and 1552 nanometers. And the output spacing, output waveguide spacing is 20 micron from here to here. Calculated parameters are here, X slab is 5 millimeters, pitch D is 12 microns, and delta L is 74 microns. 
these values are realistic values for optical circuit. We can so we can make we can realize the wavelength demultiplexer available for commercial WDM system with a wavelength spacing of one nanometer and the wavelength count is about 100. This shows WDM com optical communication systems. There are a lot of transmitters on the left side and receivers on the right side. As I said, AWG wavelength filter is used as the wavelength demultiplexer in the receiver. We can use AWG filter as a wavelength multiplexer in transmitter if input and output waveguides are reversed in use. In commercial, typical WDM system, wavelength spacing is about 0.4 nanometers and wavelength count is 80. If we use transmitters and receivers compatible with 100 gigabit per second, 100 giga, gig times 80 wavelengths, that is 8,000 gigabit per second data transmission is possible with a single optical fiber. I'd like to summarize the feature of AWG filters. First, compactness. The chip size is two by three centimeters square in case of silica waveguide and less than one centimeter square in case of silicon waveguide. The second one is the high accuracy. Wavelength of the fabricated filter is designed is as designed thanks to high uniformity of refractive index and high precision waveguide information using photolithography process. And next, high wavelength resolution. The resolution depends on the length difference between waveguides delta L and the narrow wavelength spacing is possible thanks to flexibility of the uh, waveguide layout. In application, multiplexing and demultiplexing of different wavelengths light in commercial WDM optical communication system. I'd like to move on to the next topic, optical circuit for coherent receiver. The right lower figure is an optical circuit for use in coherent receiver. It is composed of polarization splitter here, polarization rotator here, and the two 19 degree hybrid here and this one. This, this one. And there are two input ports here and here. One is for the optical signal for, from the transmitters and the other is the for the reference light. Moreover, there are two sets of four outputs. Totally, there are eight outputs for photodiodes. As an introduction to this topic, first I'd like to talk about why such a complicated optical circuit is required. Well, we need to read out the phase of the signal light because high speed communication systems such as 100 gigabit per second or higher employ phase modulations. Interference between signal and reference light is used for reading the phase and the modulation uh, and the polarization state of both lights must be the same for inducing interferences. The procedure in the optical circuit is step one separate horizontal and vertical polarizations of received signal light using polarization splitters. 
Second, read out the phase of polarization component using interference with the reference light in 90-degree optical hybrid. Third step, read out the phase of vertical component using the same way as the step two after rotating the polarization. <clears throat> and fourth step, digitally calculate the sum of step two and three results for polarization diversity reception. I didn't mention polarization dependence of the waveguide so far, but actually waveguide has have small birefringence due to compressive stress from the substrate. Birefringence is the difference um, of the refractive index between horizontal and vertical polarization, and it causes light speed difference, which results in the phase difference between two polarization states. We can remove, remove the birefringence by etching the cladding layer and making the stress groups stress release groups as shown in this figure, like this. One waveguide here in the max and the circuit has a stress release groups and the other waveguide has no groups. Look at the low, left low figure, this one. Horizontally polarizes input and the light comes out from the lower output because two lights are in phase. Let's check the phase in the light flow. In case of the upper root from here, upper root and to here, start with degree zero, through pass in the coupler zero, and straight waveguide is zero, and cross pass in the coupler from here to here is 90 degree. So the totally 0, 0, 0, 90. The total phase is the 90 degree. In case of the lower root from here to here, start with 0. Cross pass in the coupler is 90 degree. And straight waveguide is 0. And through pass of the coupler is 0. So 0, 90, 0, 0, totally 90 degree. So <clears throat> the two lights are in in-phase states. In a similar way, the, the, uh, at the out, upper output, the two lights are in reverse phase and there's no output light. Look at the right figure, this one. Vertically polarized light, vertically polarized light is input. Here. And lower, and this waveguide has no groups. This one, and no groups. And there's a, a phase difference, and the phase is 180 degree compared with the, this situation. In this case, zero degree, and here, 180 degree due to the bi-refringence. This upper waveguide has the groups, so there's no phase difference between, in this case, and this case. So degree, zero degree. So far, so far, <clears throat> sorry. So the output, upper output here is in phase condition. On the other hand, the in the lower output here is in the reverse phase conditions. As a result, Horizontal polarization light comes out from the lower output, and the, the vertical polarization comes out upper output port. Next, I'll talk about the 90 degree hybrid circuit and light to electrical signal conversion. 90 degree hybrid is composed of four 50% couplers this, 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 and this. They are connected to each other with four waveguides. This, 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 
and this. There are two input port. One is for the signal light, U, and the other is for the reference light here. The two lights are divided, these couplers, and the signal and the reference lights are mixed and interfere in this couplers. Right from the uh, signal light go through this path, go to this coupler, and the reference light is going to this, and two lights are mixed in this couplers. And also we have the, the other coupler here, and in this coupler, Light, a signal light and reference light are also interfere each other in this couplers. There are four optical output waveguides here, here, and this, and this. And light intensity is converted to photo current by four photodiodes. And current, photo current is converted to voltage with this converter and sampled as digital values and mathematically processed with the DSP. Let's think the case that the phase of the signal light is zero degree and 180 degrees. Look at these pictures. The signal light, a phase of the signal light is zero, zero degree as well as the reference. And the signal light go to go into the disk couplers and in this coupler, the light goes to the go the uh, cross path, and then go this waveguide and couple into to the this coupler. And the, so in this case, the signal light experienced 90 degree and zero degree, and totally 90 degree. And for the reference light, zero degree zero degree and 90 degree for cross path in the couplers. So the totally 90 degrees. Signal and the reference are in phase synchronized and the mixed light power is high at this port. So the port one is called constructive port and light power here becomes maximum when the signal phase is zero. On the other hand, look at these pictures. Signal is zero, zero degree and go this way and go this way and comes out at the output port number two. In this case, light experienced zero, 90, 90. So totally 180 degree here. For the reference light, light go through, go this way and zero degree, zero, zero. So totally zero degree. So the uh, signal phase is in reverse to reference. I mean that the signal has the 180 degree and the reference is zero. So there, there is no optical power at output number two here, no lights here. The port two is called destructive port and the light here becomes minimum. But if the signal phase is 180 degree here, not zero, but, but the, if the signal light is 180 degree, light power here beca becomes maximum because reverse of the reverse phase is in phase. As a result, output port one can detect the signal phase of zero and output port two can detect the signal phase of 180 degree. The next case is that the phase of the signal light is 90 degree and minus 90 degrees. In this case, we use the lower this couple an important point is that the, this waveguide, the red one, is one-fourth wavelength shorter than the other 
three waveguides. This means there is a minus 90 degree phase shift in this waveguide. And the signal light from here, initially it has the phase of 90 degree and the travel go, travel go this way and the zero degree and zero degree. So totally 90 degree. On the other hand, reference light from here, the reference light, the phase is red, zero, zero, 90 degree, minus 90 degree, and 90 degree. So totally 90 degree. The signal and the reference are in phase, both are 90 degree, and mixed light power is here, is high. So the port three here is constructive for 90 degree input and light power here becomes maximum when the signal phase is 90 degree. On the other hand, look at these pictures and we focus on the port number four. The signal is 90 degree and go this way, zero degree and 90 degree. So totally 100, 180 degree signal light for signal light. For the reference light, zero, zero degree, 90 degree, minus 90 degree, and zero. So totally zero degrees. So the signal and the reference are reverse phase, and there is no light power at output number four. So port four is destructive port for 90 degree input, but if we change the signal, phase of the signal 90 degree to minus 90 degree, it becomes the light power here becomes maximum because the reverse of the reverse is in phase. As a result, output number three can detect the signal, signal uh, phase of 90 degree and output number four can detect the signal phase of minus 90 degree. With this slide, I'll talk about how, how to calculate the phase of the signal light. As I said in the previous two slides, optical power at output number one represent how much the power of signal light with phase of zero degree is. And output number two represent the power of the 180 degrees. And output number three represents the power of the 90 degree phase. And number four uh, represents the power of the minus 90 degree phase. This is, uh, there is one important point. Look at the photodiodes number two and number four, this and this. Not a node, but the cathode is connected to voltage, current voltage converters. So the voltage will be converted here, this one and this one, and converted to the ne negative values. On the other hand, current from the photodiode number one and number three is converted to the positive value as usual. As a result, voltage here represent my number one minus number two, and here number three minus number four. It is, it, it is easy to understand this operation by using vectors in XY plane this vector, this vector represents the optical power of number one, and this vector, number two, and this vector, number three, and this vector, number four. Finally, we obtain the phase of the signal light as this. The phase phi equals to arc tangent of V 
3, 4 over V, 1, 2. This calculation is done by digital signal processor, processor DSP and the receiver. Additional note for coherent reception. As I said, coherent detection system is composed of following parts. The polarization splitter, 90 degree hybrid, balanced photodiodes, current voltage converters, and analog to digital converters and digital signal processors. There are a lot of optical circuit elements and electrical parts. For compactness and the cost of reduction, integration with these devices are required. So photonics electronics integration technology is very important and high, it, it's a hot topic in this research field. The second point is the receiver can detect not only phase, but also the phase amplitude of the signal, right? And it is applicable to any modulation format, such as on-off keying, BPSK, QPSK, and QAM. I'd like to wind up my talk with conclusion and showing references for beginners. I've reviewed the fundamentals of optical waveguide, transfer function of the optical circuit, Mach-Zender interferometer-based optical switch, affimetric Mach-Zender-based optical frequency filter, AWG wavelength filter for WDM system, and coherent reception circuit for phase modulation signal. By using silica glass waveguide technology for fabrication, all the devices are used in commercial optical communication systems because they have excellent optical characteristics. Recently, compactness and integration with other optical and electron devices becomes very important. Research and development, development on semiconductor, uh, such as silicon and engine phosphide, optical circuits is also active now. Here are reference papers for beginners. I hope it will be helpful. Thank you for your kind attention.